Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hair-raising, fun-filled, expeditious episode of Radio Rama, where, as the name implies, I show you how to work on radios, sometimes record players, stereo systems, occasional televisions. We have a Admiral, a Bakelite Admiral record player radio. Uh, I do not know what the condition is. The cord is cut. It was also missing all of its tubes, so I put new tubes in it. But first, I'm going to put away my goodies. I got an order of capacitors because I go through these things like crazy. And uh, big shout out to Sal at Sal's Capacitor Corner. He uh, is always fastidious and accurate, and he has good rates. So if you're looking for capacitors and you happen to live in the U.S., look up Sal's Capacitors and uh, tell them that. Seth sent you. <laughs> anyway, let's. I'm going to put these away and then I'll start the process of restoring the record player. Okay, so apparently it is a model 6J22. Has one, two, three, four, five, six tubes, which means it's a little more sensitive. It's interesting. This is, I'm guessing, the early 50s. You've got um, a mixture of different tube types in here. We have miniatures, and then the rest of them are just octal tubes. That is what is left of the cord. Which means the insulation is completely gone. That's not safe. Uh, it looks like the rubber on the record player mount, or motor mount, is fine. Ooh, we got a a C clip here that has come loose somewhere. I don't know where that could go. I'll put it away. But what I'm going to do is remove everything. Remove the chassis, which is this guy. It's held in with these four screws. And then it looks like there's one single screw holding the record player together. I'll need to find that replacement. And it looks like we've got a little antenna. That'll need to come loose. I think I can just unbolt that. That's just helping with some screws. Ferret rod antenna. So let's get this bad boy out of here and see what we got going on inside. Okay, so I removed both the chassis and the record player. And uh, what an underwhelming sized speaker that is. Then again, I'm not surprised. Admiral is kind of like a cheap, a cheaper brand, like a budget brand. Surprisingly, they're one of the few companies from that era that made radios that's still around. I think they make appliances now, like refrigerators and stuff. But anyway, what we're going to do is take the, the bottom off. It's interesting, it says tested radio department. What does that say? I can't even see what that says. Schwarzbacher F Company, San Francisco, California. I wonder what that's all about. Maybe it was sold at a department store or something. But we're gonna see what kind of goodies lurks underneath. Who knows what evil lurks underneath? The radio repairman knows. All right. Well, right away I can see it has been worked. Wow, there's nothing here. <laughs> there's like a handful of parts. Um, this has been replaced. That's not original. That looks like a Sprague Adams cap. Yep. And what do we have here? It's got... Two 50 microfarad capacitors. No, wait, wait a minute. Two 50 microfarad capacitors and one 20 microfarad capacitor. I'm just going to replace all those with 40s, 40 microfarad caps, or uh, 47 rather. Uh, the other thing I'm going to look for in this, which is key and important, is this is a floating hot chassis, meaning it's not going directly to ground. It's going to ground through a capacitor and. What could that be? Which cap is that? It's 
hard for me to tell here. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I'm going to find it while filming. I'll find it as I get recapping. But what I'm going to do is replace um, these electrolytics. It looks like there's actually four in here. Here's a fourth one. 40 microfarads. General Electric. Okay, so that's clearly, that's been replaced too, because Admiral wouldn't put General Electric parts in their radios, especially General Electric branded stuff that had been Admiral brand. And what do we have here? Look at this guy. It's kind of burnt on the end here. That guy's probably shorted. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten paper capacitors and four electrolytics. So not a ton. Not an excessive amount, especially for a record player, but enough. And uh, so I want to replace all of these with some modern electrolytic capacitors. And now that my stock and stash is filled to the brim, I can happily use capacitors to my heart's content all day long. Okay, what I usually do when it comes to replacing capacitors, electrolytic capacitors rather, is look at where all of the positive and negative leads go. Obviously, they're sharing this one negative lead that goes here. So there are several ways to handle it. Either you can collectively put all of the negative leads here of the three new electrolytic capacitors and then run your positives, which are these multicolored wires to them, or you can mount them independently, the positives here, here, here. And uh, anyway, I think it's gonna be easier if I were to replace, put all of the negatives together here and then run the positives just bunch them all up together. And I did find what the grounding cap is. It's this guy. And it's the wrong type of capacitor material. And it's a huge value, a tenth of a microfarad. That's enough to give you quite a jolt. And so we need to replace that with a much lower value and a much different type of capacitor. An X2, Y2 across the line safety cap. So let me get started by digging into my stash of electrolytic capacitors. You see how small these are? Oops. So we're going to get three of these and tie their negative ends, which are the stripes, together. And then the individual positives will go, these, these wires will jump off of those. Actually, I need a fourth one because there's another electrolytic here. And the safety caps, the ones that I mentioned, look like this. X2, Y2 across the line rated caps. And we need two of those. We need one here, which is the across the line. And then we need one here, which is the two chassis. And that's going to reduce the amount of current that could get to the individual quite a bit lower. All right, so I've replaced all four of the electrolytic capacitors. I know that's kind of hairy looking. We're going to make sure that nothing is touching, which they aren't. We replaced a few of the paper caps, and we have the two of the ground cap, and this burnt looking cap was replaced as well. So let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, pilot light's still good. That's good. And we definitely have tube filaments happening. Hopefully, I didn't put any capacitors in backwards. I'm not sure if it's on radio or phonograph. Find out soon enough. That sounds like radio. He's emotional. He's, fight. He's got his guys going. But you're up 18. All right, good. I don't want to play it that long because we still have a bunch of leaky old capacitors in there, but that's a good sign. It means it's, it's, it's going to be a, half, a healthy, happy radio. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six more paper caps to replace. And uh, then I want to move on to the record player, I hope the record player works because that's like half the damn thing and part of one of the main reasons someone's going to buy it because it does play 33s or LPs rather so much better than just playing 78s okay so it's now fully recapped and it's still working but I think it needs a uh, realignment it doesn't sound that great I'm going to clean the contacts before I do that just to make sure that we're making good contact before I start doing a realignment Gonna clean the, all the volume, tone control, contact.
All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it upright so I can get to these cans so I can try to adjust the alignment on it. All right, let's see if we can tune this up a little bit. Huh. I don't it makes that much of a difference. I mean, you talk about, you know, Wade Taylor the fourth. Hmm. He kept trying to hit that. Uh oh. I just totally lost the signal. That's no good. <laughs> what the hell? Really? Wait a minute. That tube just lost filament. Really? Well, it's a 12 VA6, so it can't. I probably have a ton of those sitting around. Let's see. 12 BA6. Talk about weird. I've never had that happen. Just have a tube randomly blow on me. Let's see. Either that or have a problem with the socket. I don't see a film on that one either. Let me look underneath. All right. Well, that was weird. doesn't describe me. I tend to keep my TVs for forever. Why is this not turning off? Oh, it's just hard to turn. Anyway, that's probably about as good as the radio is going to get. It's not like people that buy these things actively eagerly listen to AM radio anyway. So there's nothing to listen to. Like, who wants to listen to sports talk all day long about games that happened last week? Okay, next thing, we'll get some Zoom Spout oil. One of these has a holes in it. And we're gonna oil up the bearings on the tuning condenser, front, back, center. And then we will get a little bit on this pulley, not to get any on the speaker, because once you get oil on the speaker, you're kind of shit out of luck. Maybe put a little bit here. Just a scotch. Ah, see, that's much. That's turning a lot nicer now. Just feels better. Put a little bit on the volume and tune in the uh, tone control as well. That's probably a little bit too much, but I'm doing it one-handed with my camera. So now what I'm going to do is take it over to my safety rig and see if the amount of current getting to the chassis is sufficiently low. Looks like the rubber on this has gotten. Whatever, it's fine. Okay, so I've got it hooked up to my safety rig here. The maximum on this scale is... Our maximum is supposed to be point... 
six tenths of a volt. Something seems funny here. Okay, it's plugged in. 0 0.003 on neutral side. 0 0.066 on hot side. So it's passing, passing with flying colors. I don't know why there's... Yuck. Cold tape goo. Alright, so now it's time to move on to the record player, which... I don't have exactly high hopes for it. Doesn't seem like a very wonderfully way. It doesn't seem like a wonderfully made unit, but who knows? I haven't even looked at it yet. Okay, first thing I need to do is take the platter off. There's a little C clip here, and this whole platter will lift off. Because what we're going to look at is to see what kind of condition the rubber friction wheels are in. Very strange record changer mechanism. All right. Let me take that clip off. Also, you want to make sure and protect your needle. That's why I have this tape wrapped around it. All right, first things first. As it is now, it's not going to work because these rubber belts are dried out. But luckily, I think I have spares here, and I hope they're going to fit. So first thing I'm going to do is take this off. There's a little C-clip here. Take that friction wheel off because we need to clean that up. Rubber on it's not great. It's kind of hardened up, so... Not a lot of promises, not a lot of promising things going on with this right now. All right, well, I was able to find some belts, and they seem to fit. The motor's turning well. Question is, can I save the friction wheel? Because it doesn't seem like it's very happy. All right, miraculously, it seems to work pretty well. Well, I'm not sure if it has any sound. I'm not sure if the cartridge is any good, but mechanically, it seems like it's okay. So, logically, the next thing to do is to put a record on it. See if it produces any sound when I hook it up to the amplifier. Alright, the record player seems to be working, but... And I don't know why, it's playing a little fast. It's probably about 10% too fast. Anyway, I've spent probably about two hours trying to figure this out, and what I've learned over time is that sometimes if you have people in your organization who are more skilled with certain areas than you are, then maybe let them handle it. So I'm going to hand this over to Kyle, our record player guy. I am going to clean up the record player, and then I'm going to proceed to clean up the, the Bakelite cabinet. And uh, when you clean Bakelite, you want to make sure that you don't use any abrasives or any harsh cleaners. I'm just going to go over it with car noob car wax. That's all. Well, I think I might have found the problem. It was, see this little indentation here? It was going back and forth between this and that one. But it wasn't moving over to the third one. It was stuck. So I just oiled it up a little bit. And it worked free. Also, I think someone put Put this knob on wrong or something. It seems like it's, I don't know, something funny about it. That may or may not fix the problem. We'll see. Because according to this thing, that's 45. And that's 33. That seems to be moving a lot better now. I think it was just kind of gummed up. It is still playing a little bit fast. Just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just let the damn thing run. Like I said, I'm pretty ignorant about record players, so I'm hoping that whatever is <clears throat> happening will settle down a little bit. But while I'm letting that happen, I'm going to polish the Bakelite case. And like I said, Bakelite has got a very sensitive finish to it. You can ruin it if you try to scrub it. So what I'm going to use is... Good old fashioned car new car wax, my mechanical drill powered buffer. Sometimes you need to work smarter and not harder. I used to do this by hand. This makes my life a lot easier. Alright, so this is after the first application of wax. It's looking a lot better. Um, it looks like that someone spilled something acidic or something on here. 
because that that has gotten past the finish. There's nothing much I can do about it. I can buff it some more to maybe make it not less apparent, but that you can't really do much about that. Once you kind of like damage the uh, fake light casting surface, you really can't get it back because it's a fibrous jute rope based. At least that's what I think. Basically, they it's chopped up fibers like powdered fibers with resin. And so as soon as you, as, as there's no casting, basically you've got like a raw looking product underneath. All right, so further polishing and waxing of the cabinet inside and out. Because remember when you have the record player playing, you'll probably have that lid open. So that lid underneath needs to look just as good. I was able to remove almost all of the abrasion from the top. Let's see if I can close this better. Can't hardly see anything now, so that's much better. Also, I got the record player to work right. Um, I forgot to film it, but basically what it boiled down to is it was an accumulation of debris on one of the pulleys. Basically old rubber, and so I like scraped that off, and now it plays at the right speed. So I cleaned up the record player too. And so now it's time to start doing some uh, reassembling, because it is pretty much done. I even cleaned the chassis up a little bit. And it's been playing off and on for, for hours, so it's pretty reliable. All right, she's back together now, and it seems to be working quite nicely. I mean, is it gonna win any sound contests? Probably not. Like why here's the radio. Look like for descendants of enslaved Africans. Management. And so simple that something like this exists. It holds up to ten different. Charge your home with supersonic Wi-Fi. Xfinity. Stephen Langford has your sports. All right. Well, also fixed this thing. This was not closing properly, and now it is. So that's a nice little record player. I mean, you're not going to buy it because you're like, I want to have the most amazing sounding system. You're going to buy it because it looks cool, mostly. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And until the next time a radio comes across the workbench, we'll see you guys next time. Adios.